there's a lot of inaccurate information going around being shared by parents. Here's what's really happening with sex education in schools this year. When it comes to primary schools, there's no statutory, there's no legal kind of a requirement to teach sex education. There yeah. is a legal requirement to teach sex education in secondary schools, but yeah. it's open to the school to do whenever they feel it's suitable for the kids and it should be done in consultation with parents to take into account their children's specific needs and their own values kind of background. Uh, when it comes to primary schools, what there is a legal obligation to teach is relationships and health education. The, m the majority yeah. of the learning outcomes that the, the government is demanding be achieved through them, realized through that curriculum, is something most Muslims would not have an issue with. Yeah. However, the schools, the primary schools, do need to consult parents. We need to also ensure that although we start those conversations off face to face or person to person rather than through template letters but what's really important is that especially if it looks like the school is not really responding to your legitimate concerns really try and at least have some of if those conversations are had over the phone then you summarize them in an email and send them to the school and say it's just a, um, a summary of our conversation is this correct and get confirm that yeah so you keep an audit trail of those conversations because it's very important at a later stage it may be uh, it may be necessary uh, at some stage or another if we find that so lots of schools are not fulfilling their statutory responsibility to consult with parents that there may be a, a need to do a judicial review and if that's needed we need some level of examples of where parents have sought to consult, sought to get schools to consult them and they've been rebuffed. And parents, Muslim parents in particular, you guys out there listening now, you have to be proactive in your relationship with your school's headmaster, headmistress, head teacher. Give them positive uh, commendation when they do something good. Express mm. your concerns when they when they do something you don't like. Don't just go into yeah. full-blown campaign mode. They're not your MP, they're your school head teacher. Get involved in coming to uh, some kind of agreement and uh, in what resources that you're going to use, uh, what resources that you're don't, not going to use, what things that you're concerned that you don't want to uh, expose your children to. And if they are doing any sex education in primary school, you're still 100% within your right to withdraw them from them from their lessons. Uh, withdrawing them from sex education uh, and in these types of lessons doesn't mean you just ignore that issue. You have the obligation as, as parents, first and foremost, to give your children the proper education with regards to those things within an Islamic paradigm that uh, understands the broader truths around why they are here, who Allah is, where they get their morality from and so on and so forth. We can't achieve any success in any of these matters without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the, the last thing is really make du'a. Make du'a if you want to achieve success in terms of in, in what you're doing in schools. Make du'a, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help and support in doing what you're doing. And ask, especially ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for support in raising our children, making sure they remain guided, making sure they stick firmly upon this uh, Sirat al-Mustaqeem, that they are that they're guided to remain Muslims and worshippers and uh, uh, people who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that they do.